in this video about bite-sized accounting topics, we will discuss what non-controlling interests are under IFRS in under 5 minutes. You are watching Accounting Zero to Hero. I'm guessing you are here because you've been reading IFRS 10 or IFRS 3, and you probably have read about non-controlling interests or NCI. It can also be called as minority interests in some texts and other gaps. But what exactly does it mean? According to this standard, a non-controlling interest or NCI is the equity in a subsidiary not attributable directly or indirectly to a parent. It is important to remember that if the parent owns 100% of the subsidiary, then there is no non-controlling interest. How does it look visually? Imagine that we have company Z with two shareholders. Company A, which owns 80%, and Company B, which owns 20%. Under the assumption that A has control over Z because of the 80% ownership, we now have to consolidate these two companies under IFRS 10. The balances of Company B is never included in the consolidation. The 20% shares owned by B and Company Z becomes the minority interest. But how exactly does it happen? Continuing from the simple structure we discussed, let's assume that for company A and company Z, we have the following balance sheets, and we have to consolidate them for the year-end reporting. Company A's assets are composed of two items, its investment in company Z amounting to 80000 and other assets amounting to 120000 A's equity is composed of its own share capital and retained earnings, and lastly, it has some trade payables. Company Z's assets are composed of other assets amounting to 110,000. Its equity section is composed of share capital of 100,000 and no retained earnings section because for the sake of simplicity, we assume that Company Z has just been incorporated as at the day of consolidation. It also has some other payables amounting to 10,000 during its time. Now the procedures under IFRS tells us that all assets and liabilities need to be added 100% without consideration of the percentage owned by the parent. How do we do that while also considering the 20% not owned by A? The answer is through the non-controlling interest in equity. In Company Z's share capital, we notice that it is in full figure of 100,000, of which 80% 80 or 80,000 is owned by Company A. By the definition of the standard, we split the share capital into two sections, those owned by A and those owned by the NCI, in this case, Company B. The part owned by A is cancelled out by the investment account it is holding in the assets of the parent, and the one owned by NCI is reclassified as a new section of equity, which only exists in the consolidated financial statements. Finally, we add all these things together to form the consolidated financial statements of Company A. With this, you see the practical application of the definition that the NCI is the part of the subsidiary's equity, in this case the remaining 20% of shares owned by B not directly or indirectly attributable to the parent company, in this case Company A. It is important to remember that the NCI is an equity item, not an asset nor a liability. To be more specific, the standard states that a parent shall present non-controlling interests in the consolidated statement of financial position within equity, separate from the equity owners of the parent. This means that the consolidated equity is split between the parent and the NCI. Lastly, the NCI appears as an equity item exactly because of how consolidations work. No matter how much ownership there is of a subsidiary, we always use 100% of the subsidiary's assets and liabilities, and they are never prorated in the consolidation. This prorata actually happens in the subsidiary's equity section when we split the equity into those pertaining to the parent and those pertaining to the NCI. Now, it gets a little bit more interesting and complicated during business combinations, where you also need to split the subsidiary's retained earnings in other equity items. But that's a story for another video. For sure, you will already be able to apply these simple concepts to more complicated NCI situations. I hope you found this video super helpful. I hope to see you in the future installments of the Bite-Sized Accounting series.